to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today is Valentine's Day, but you're not going to hear this until tomorrow, so I hope you got laid. I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to come out and say it. But anyway, so um, I want to get through this kind of quick because this is a pretty long episode here. And um, thank, you for, thank you for everyone who um, sent in questions and um, sat through that masturbatory um, last episode to get to the conclusion of my talk about translation with Jens. It was great. We talked about two of my poems, uh, The Jacarandas Are Blooming and The Dust Lamps Revenge. And then we talked about the health of poetry in Sweden. And then we talked about if there are starving artists in Sweden, like if that's even a thing. So that's what this episode's all about. And now let me get to the motherfucking shout outs. We're gonna do this on the quick so i want to give a big thank you to my patrons chase michael deborah cedar harry thank you guys so much and then over in the thank you crew i want to give a big thank you to patrick to Britt, to jh to jessica to jan and then all those wonderful beautiful mother effers over in the damn anarchy crew want to give a big thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Hannah, to Thomas, to Tim, to Lisa, to Josh, to Alan, to Shaylin, to Caitlin, to Andrew, to Tim, and to Chill Baby. Thank you guys so much. And for the biggest of the swingers over there, the Chapbook of the Month Club, the number one chappy, the gosh darn SDG. Hope you guys all had a wonderful Valentine's Day, and you guys did what I already said to do. There's a bunch of stuff coming up. Thursday, I have my uh, the first Poetic Anarchy open mic slash workshop slash scavenger hunt. It's at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Um, there will be Zoom links. I will leave those in the description down below if you would like to partake in that funness. Um, other than that, we have um, poems about effing out now. Go get it. Um, Poetic Anarchy volume three out now. Go get it. And I just want you guys to remember that in March, March 1st, we'll start the um, crowdfunding pre-order campaign for my new collection, Winner of Your Mom's Sodomy Prize for Poetry. And for those of you who just collect my chapbooks and stuff like that, the chapbook that is going to come out in March will only be available if you um, contribute to the campaign. So the only place you'll be able to get March's chapbook is as a bonus for picking up my uh, new book. So that'll be fun. And I think that's everything. So here we go with the show. The jacarandas have bloomed. There were um, a couple questions I had. Well, let me ask you this. You want to read it? Yeah, I guess I should read it. Okay, so the jacarandas have bloomed. Jacaranda flowers litter the sidewalk like roaches and bubblegum. They have been blooming for weeks now, but no scent. None of that aroma from my childhood that makes me feel safe and secure. None of that until today. Today, faint whiffs, the smell in my nostrils, reminding me of better times, warmer days, Less responsibility, dinner on the table at six, back when the wonder of women was something that kept you up at night. In naive astonishment, instead of them keeping you up because of the nightmares of cruel and hard faces and hearts. Money being something which meant you were able to play video games at the arcade, buy candy bars, ice cream, soda pop. Being able to leave the liquor store with the comic book instead of having to put it back on the spinner rack. Mm -hmm. Now money is something that you never have enough of and is spent before you get it because all the bills and rent are late and the calls are getting more frequent. Some things shut off. All of these thoughts as my old dry feet, cracked and scaly like the dinosaur they are attached to, stomps around in flip-flops, smashing the delicate dying blooms under my rubber soles and soul, staining the cracked and uneven sidewalk that's already stained with bubblegum, dead roaches, piss, and shit from human and dog. The sigh that I just sighed was heavier than my 350 pounds of fat, bone, and shit, and I do not feel any better, but the jacarandas have bloomed, 
and are starting to fill the air with that sweet smell that I've missed so much. Okay. I like this one. Thank cool. You. Thank you. Thank you, man. I uh, should I read the Swedish one? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, jacarandorna har blommat. Jacaranda blommor skräpar på trottoaren som kackelackor och bubbelgum. De har blommat i flera veckor nu, men ingen doft. Ingen sån där arom från min barndom som får mig att känna mig trygg och säker. Inget sånt för idag. Idag vaga pustar doften i näsborrarna som påminner om bättre tider, varmare dagar, färre plikter. Middagen dukar klockan sex, då när miraklet kvinnor var något som höll en vaken om nätterna, naiv och förbluffad. Istället för att de höll en vaken med mardrömmarna om grymma och hårda ansikten och hjärtan. Pengar var något som innebar att man kunde gå till spelhallen och spela. Köpa godis och glass och läsk. Att man kunde ta med sig serietidningen istället för att behöva lägga tillbaka den i det roterande stället. Nu är pengar något man aldrig har nog av. Och som går åt innan man fått dem. För alla räkningar och hyran är försenade. Och telefonen ringer allt oftare. En del saker stängs av. Alla dessa tankar som mina torra gamla fötter, spruckna och nariga, som dinosaurien de sitter på, klampar omkring i flipflop tofflor och krossar de sköra döende blommorna under gummihälen under själen. Fläckar ner den spruckna och ojämna trottoaren som redan är fläckig av bubbelgum. Och döda kackelackor, piss och skit från människa och hund. Sucken som jag just drog var tyngre än mina 160 kilo, fett, ben och skit. Och jag mår inte bättre för det. Men jakarandorna har blommat. Och de börjar fylla luften med den där söta doften som jag har saknat så mycket. Nice. Okej. Okay. Crazy. Okay, so <laughs> there are quite a few spots in here where you have other things that you could say instead of the other, right? Yeah, it's uh, oh yeah, one of them is quite interesting. But uh, did you have any questions we can go for your? I don't want to turn this into a monologue <laughs> by me. <laughs> um the thing that tripped me out the most and why I wanted this one in here <laughs> is because there's one line in here that says you probably know it before i get to it where the hell is it it says in flip-flops smashing the delicate dying blooms under my rubber soles and soul now yes. in english obviously souls and soul they they're this they sound the exact same they're spelt different they mean two different things yeah. now that is that going to be able to be translated like that Uh, yeah, I mean, not exactly, but it wasn't too far because what I have now is, well, the th first thing I need to say is that we, in Sweden, in this, in Swedish, in this kind of uh, sentence, you wouldn't really say my, like, for example, if I, if I, if you say I hurt my foot in English, in Swedish, we would say I hurt the foot. Okay. And okay. so that's why you don't see the word my a lot. Okay. Uh, in sometimes I use it because I think it sounds better. But uh, so that's why there is no word for my here. We uh, <laughs> uh, but what I've said is uh, here is the under the rubber heel under the sole. Yeah. And it rhymes. So oh, it's, uh, you don't have the it's not the same uh, <laughs> word. It's not the, the, the that the words sound the same it's just a rhyme. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, and by and the rubber heel and it's the heel on your foot it's not the like uh, the heel on your shoe so it's yeah. like if when i say rubber heel i mean that the the heel is covered by rubber okay and then uh, so because it rhymes okay and so it's yeah, just that works that's cool so it's yeah. a bit different but and the thing is that what happened here uh, was that uh, i actually didn't notice the similarity between these words Uh, because I was reading, I wasn't reading it aloud, and okay. and also English isn't my native language, so I was kind yeah. of distracted by the, the they are spelled differently. But you had mentioned it before, 
And so I was, you had mentioned something about words sounding similar. And so I was kind of looking for it and I didn't have a solution. And I like, I started translating these poems in like December. Yeah. And when I came up with this rhyme, it was like six hours ago from now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, sometimes it takes time. Yeah, that's awesome. And then it just happens. So, uh, but it's a good thing. It's good. You should uh, leave a, a few traps here and there. <laughs> okay. but, uh, we didn't have a controversy here because you're happy with it yeah so. yeah no that's cool i kind of dig that <laughs> ends up rhyming but i understand the whole idea too like because by you saying um a rubber heel is that kind of like poetic in sweden like oh like it's not his shoe it's his heel is now rubber. Like, is that kind of the thing, or is it? Is yeah. that just how it would be said? Uh, no, it's a uh, it's a novel. It's like something that I okay. made up for this poem. So, so that's a difference too. Okay. So, but, were there uh, was there anything in here that was like awkward from a Swedish sense in this poem? Yes, uh, the whole uh, uh, money being something stanza i guess you could call it oh, okay okay uh not all of it but uh, there is some things there like for example money being something which meant you were able and um yeah to play video games at the arcade <laughs> and uh, the arcade line is uh, that was tricky in swedish because like the words for play games and arcade are all based on the same word in swedish <laughs> so <laughs> so it would be like very repetitive and so, uh, but it's very common to just say play in Sweden. Yeah. And you should, by that you mean play games. And okay. so what the translation says is to go to the arcade and play. Okay. Uh, and uh, arcade spiel hall, and it's like game hall. Yeah. And so it's like, it's shorter than the original. And because I didn't want to have the word spiel, like being repeated over and over and over three times, it's too much. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, and then the next line is we don't really talk about candy bars in Swedish, like we, uh, but it's uh, I hear that a lot in American English, like yeah, uh, like Do you guys uh, just say candy. Like sweets or candy or something like that. Yeah, we just say candy. Like uh, if you talk about a candy bar wrapper, for example, you would just say a candy wrapper. Okay, okay, and uh, and so the. Uh, but the thing is that on that line, in the original, all the words have like two words in them, candy bars, ice cream, soda pop. Yeah. It's like two words each. And so and and so in the translation, they all have one word each. Okay. Because <laughs> I, and, and they are like uh, short words. And so uh, I kind of feel that I mirrored something because ice cream and soda pop, both of them are just one word. Okay. No, okay. not the same word, but you see what I mean. Like ice yeah. cream is just glass. It's just yeah. a French word. And soda pop is just lesk. It's based on a, a verb that means to refresh. Okay. And so it's like a refresher, I guess. So it sort of makes sense to leave out the bars uh, thing yeah. in Swedish. So then you have three similar words. But then uh, something happens. Uh, first of all, like the being able, the whole liquor store thing mm -hmm. down to the spinner rack i for grammatical reasons i had to sort of change the word order okay and uh, we don't have liquor stores in sweden <laughs> because we have uh, we do we there's just one company that's allowed to to sell alcohol and it's owned by the state it's for good reasons yeah we have, yeah, yeah we have a very problematic relationship to alcohol in sweden <laughs> there's like a lot of binge drinking in our like the way like, it's think, not like southern europe <laughs> i think how liquor store works at least where i grew up like in southern california like any corner shop yeah um usually had like a sign that says liquor on it and so you would just go oh that's the liquor store but you could go there and get groceries um yeah any kind of snacks, candy, they would have video games, like arcade games in there. Um, just like a 7-Eleven kind of place. Yeah, exactly. You know, but like they all just have a big sign that says liquor. And so, oh, that's the liquor store. I'm going to go to the liquor yeah. store. And I know a lot of other people would go 
I'm going to go to the corner market or I'm going to go to the bodega or I'm going to go to, um, you know, whatever you would call it, depending on where it is. So, or the convenience store, yeah, I guess is the that, correct I, word for it. And I was uh, thinking of just saying the store, like not mentioning the whole liquor thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, but that's a very good clarification. And, uh, but it still was like, it's like, like I don't, I didn't. It didn't sound very natural to me to say that you leave the store with the comic book because what it says now in in Swedish is that you could bring the comic book instead of having to put it back in the spinner rack. Okay. And it's like, uh, yeah. And the thing is that I left it out because the spinner rack al- already tells you. That it's a store yeah and so like i mean i i think that liquor store like fits into the original because it's like sets the scene you know yeah for real uh whereas uh if if, you, if i just say the store in in in, in swedish it's, it's it just adds a word to the line so and it's, it's like <laughs> instead of you saying leaving the store with the comic book you say you get to bring the comic book away with you yeah is that okay uh, or right. br- bringing the carbon pump comic book instead of having to put it back in the spinner yeah. rack okay that makes sense and uh so it's kind of uh it's just that the the main difference is that the reader finds out that it, you're talking about a store a little later yeah but uh, i could still i add, see what you mean i see what you mean by that but I, c- I could do it differently, but I would have to sleep on it, I think. <laughs> I usually do. But, but it's like, uh, I'm not very happy with that. And that's why I have all the gray things. There. Okay, okay. And uh, then, But, it, but it, it works. Yeah. And then this, um, a, a little farther down, um, where it says, sh- like, something shut off. You have yeah, I was going to ask there. you what, that, what you mean by that. <laughs> because I don't really understand. Oh, like, if you don't pay your electric bill... Like the electric company shuts off your power. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So then I, I okay. because yeah, and then we have maybe a little issue because you're you're putting it in like quotation marks like yeah. that. Is that for a reason or? Well, yeah, because you usually get like a note, like your shut off notice, like they'll like tack yeah. a paper to your door saying like you're a cheap ass motherfucker that didn't pay his fucking bill. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, well, uh, yeah. I got yeah. that. I. I just. I think I just read too much into the quotation marks. I think that that's. Oh, so maybe it doesn't mean that because I, that's what I how I understood it. Oh. Okay. And okay. also, and the gray part, uh, That's like me thinking, and this is very interesting, because that's me thinking. How would they put it? How would it sound in a letter? from the company <laughs> and okay. that's what you just said <laughs> so that the and uh, so that's interesting oh, i think we can do something more interesting with that because i i could have also for me i could have just put like um getting your notice or something like that you know like mm. as uh, but and anyone reading that would know oh like that their shit just got shut off you know what i'm yeah. saying like and shut off is always the because it's a shut off notice. So yeah. um that that makes sense. I get that. Yes. And the one uh, the thing that I use it's uh, it actually means some things are shut off. But it doesn't matter. That, that's just how we would say it. Upper uh, the one in gray is more like uh, a cease or something like that. Yeah, like uh, the this the the delivery of this service will cease or i mean it doesn't sound very <laughs> but, but it's how how uh, you can imagine that the company would put it in a letter but maybe the one that i chose first is works all right that's a very this is a very translator <laughs> thing to do like thinking in circles like, yeah maybe oh i'm not happy with that or maybe <laughs> it is good oh i'm not happy with that blah blah blah, blah, blah. the other thing like Cycle. like do you guys call them flip-flops like little sandals and yeah, we call them flip-flop slippers <laughs> oh, okay. so that's flip-flop what i've slippers. used all right <laughs> so it's a very it's a long longer word like was there anything else in here that Let's caused see. you to have any thoughts or anything like that well i think that this is a poem that it has the potential to be very well liked in sweden because like um, 
I think that even though it's sort of uh, it talks about piss and shit and things like that, but but it's still nice to re read a poem about flowers. A lot of people like that. I mean, oh, do but... you have jacarandas there? Yeah, that's what I was okay, going cool. to. That's because people will read this and enjoy it, and then they will ask, "But what's a jacaranda?" <laughs> so, but I, I do think that people have them when they are like, uh, if you have like a proper garden and you're interested in that stuff, yeah. then. Yeah, of course, but it's like it's a bit unusual. But to me, it's like I don't know. I don't think that's a problem. I think that that's a thing that sort of uh, translators should really embrace. Like, yeah. teach people that there is something called jacaranda. They can Google it. Like, it's a, that's part of reading. You know, you For learn real. new things. Yeah, and yeah, uh, it's kind of a. It's, yeah, but the, it's not a huge tree here, but I had one in my backyard when I was a kid. And yeah. then I never saw them for years and years and years. And then I moved to this oh. neighborhood and, and on this one street in the neighborhood, the whole street, like every house had one in front of the house. And they're like yeah. this, they're these big trees with these like purple little flowers. And dude, when those things hit, you could smell it for miles. It's just, it's yeah. such a nice little smell. And because I went so long without smelling it, you know, it was like I smelt it in my childhood and then not again until I was like yeah. in my 20s. So it was like whenever I come around trees like that, it just like hits. And there's one, actually, there's like three, but only one seems to actually bloom well um, down on the corner down here. Yeah. And so when it when it does get the scent off of it, it just comes right up in here and it just like makes me think of childhood. It's amazing. Yeah. It's your Proust uh, pastry, yeah. if you've heard about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The less responsibility thing, i that's just I chose a different expression that's more idiomatic in Swedish. It says oh. fewer du duties, <laughs> and that's like something that you would say in Swedish, but it's just like, okay, it is a kind of change, but it's for a, I think it's for a good reason. Now, the last poem here, um, I picked yeah, this one. to do the reading. Yeah. And um, yeah. Okay. I'll just do that. So the desk lamps revenge in the late afternoon at my desk to write, flip the switch on my desk lamp and outshone from the bulb, complete and utter darkness, horribly opaque, no light in it at all. The black beam sounded as if it were crushing things beneath it. I ran my fingers through it, feeling great pain. I pulled my hand back and grabbed the lamp and swung its beam around the room creaking breaking smashing shattering sounds breaking silence the wine gnats and flies flew away in a fury hurriedly my dirty cum crusted clothes on the floor inch like caterpillars towards the safety of the setting sun my paintings taped to the walls pulled away from their adhesive and rolled tight from the destruction everything was failing everything was falling apart I finally shined its full blackness onto myself, and soon I was compacted, crunched into the vacuum, the absence of light, and became nothing more than a mere idea, a faint memory of something that once was, possibly at some point, somewhere, with some purpose unfulfilled. I like this one. And in, uh, I have changed one of the lines since I sent the email to you, <laughs> okay. but uh, that's the only one. And right. um, in Swedish, it's skrivbordslampans hemd. <laughs> Sent på eftermiddagen satte jag mig ner för att skriva. Tryckte på strömbrytaren på skrivbordslampan. Och från glödlampan lyste bara fullständigt och okuvligt mörker. Fruktansvärt ogenomträngligt utan minsta spår av ljus. Den svarta strålen lät som om den krossade allting under sig- Jag förde fingrarna genom den och kände en väldig smärta. Jag ryckte åt mig handen, tog lampan och svingade strålen fram och tillbaka i rummet. Knakande, brakande, smäll, smällande, skrällande ljud bröt tystnaden. Myggorna och flugorna flög iväg i ett yrvärder, fort iväg. Mina smutsiga, ingrodda spermakläder på golvet krälade som larver. Mot den trygga solnedgången. Mina ditejpade målningar på väggarna slet sig från klistret. Och rullade undan förstörelsen. Allt gav vika, allt gick sönder. 
Till slut riktade jag bäckmörkret mot mig själv och snart hade jag tryckts ihop, pressats in i vakuumet frånvaron av ljus och blev inte mer än en tanke, ett vagt minne av något som funnits, kanske, någon gång, någonstans, med en vilja, oförlöst. Nice. Okay, so the reason why I sent yeah. this one is because it is so, I don't know the word I'm looking for here, um, I guess fictional. It's more of a story with an ending that obviously can never happen because I'm sitting here talking mm -hmm. to you, you know. Yeah. And in this, I did a few things like alliteration i did um consonants and assonance and the whole thing just little things like this to see not to see how this would turn out here but when i was writing this i was like trying to do that as i was writing it as opposed to me where i normally just like slam my fingers down and don't really think of anything i just like free thought This one was yeah. a little more our thought was put into how each word plays on the word next to it. I'm really interested to see how this plays. Yeah, I think it works like as a, especially after the poem before, because that's like very obviously like something autobiographical. Mm -hmm. And uh, and while I think it's good, I like it's good to sort of have some variation yeah. <laughs> as well. I mean, I personally, I'm I'm very tired of like autobiographical storytelling at this point because we have a lot of it in the Nordic yeah. region. Oh my god, like every major author is like a, writes some form of autobiographical fiction, and it's like for me, it's it's a bit too much. So I really yeah. enjoyed having this, but I still enjoyed the poem before. So don't get me wrong. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Uh, So for like, mm -hmm. okay, let me just try to find little things. So like the black bean. Absolutely. So the black bean, like that was worded like that for the alliteration on there. And, oh, really? Um, yeah. So that doesn't come across. Oh, wait. No, it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. So that works. Well, it's just, uh, it's not deliberate on my part. It just <laughs> does in Swedish. Quit selling yourself short. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, let me see. What's another line here? Um, and then I guess the, the creaking, breaking, smashing, sh shattering sounds that whole thing is supposed to like do all that and does i guess it does do that over yeah, here too i did uh, i um for some reason my uh, my words rhyme <laughs> like knakande brakande smällande skrällande yeah but it's just uh, it's not really uh it doesn't mean exactly the same thing i think the the fourth word is like what does it mean clashing i guess okay Like a skrällande, it's like when if you have like a bunch of baseball bats that are made of aluminum and you drop them on the ground, that's the yeah. sound. Okay. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but it it plays yeah. the same like rhythm. So yeah, that's, it's the same the same idea. Yeah. And then I guess on the next page down, uh, flew away in a fury. That was another yes. one of those, and that. That oh, doesn't yeah. hit the same, I guess. No, it's the, but I do. Uh, there is an alliteration, like uh, the lines, the the two flew and flew away in a hurry, in a oh, fury, yeah. hurry. Yeah. Flög iväg i yvärder. Nej, flög i yvärder fort iväg. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's perfect. And, um, but it's like it's also unintentional. Uh, but it doesn't mean fury. Yvärder is. Um, it's something that's. Uh, it's it basically just means a mess. Okay. Because vä yeah. väder means weather, mm -hmm. <laughs> and ir is like uh, something that's really moves around around a lot. You you would say that about uh, when it, we, when you have a heavy snowfall, yeah. you would call that ir. And so uh, and so the, it's like a like a an expression or a metaphor for something that's really like when you have these uh, flies and and uh, gnats flying up, they fly like this. Yeah, and so that's. That's the image. Okay. That's and then the, the next line down, come crested clothes. Oh, yes. What's it called? Like when when a, when a stain is, a, you, you can't make it come out because it's really. Okay. 
what in like a, like a like a set in stain yeah i guess okay uh, and uh, and uh, but we would use the word differently but but it's mean it's just mean my dirty set in i guess sperm clothes and it's like it okay. sounds really strange in english but it's like <laughs> the line in english is very like concise in, yeah. in a way that uh, i don't i don't think that you could put it in a similar way in in, in swedish so i had to change it would yeah. mina is mina my because you were saying earlier that you guys don't really use a word for that uh oh in, in this context we would use okay uh, all right mina. so it's my in the in the plural my okay. we make a distinction between so it's just my dirty it's a bit it's a bit strange when i when i look at the the uh, expression how i put it in swedish but it's like mm. something that came to me really like from nowhere and i just wrote it down and that to me feels like like i shouldn't be when i translate your poems i shouldn't be like trying to make them sound more po- poetry like or whatever yeah. i mean i i should just when i find something that is something i would say i should yeah. probably keep it and and this is what happened with this uh, uh, line but at the same time that kind of language can be very weird like spoken language is always very messy yeah. like it's always uh, <laughs> and and so um, that's why it's so difficult to explain why why yeah. i've translated it like this no uh, i like it i mean like honestly that line right there in swedish is probably the most pleasing looking line <laughs> i've seen in this whole little bit right here oh like wow, it, it just nice. it, it it looks and it feels like um, smutska is that how you say it yeah, smutsiga. Smutsiga. That, I mean, that just means dirty. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I. I don't know. I'm digging it. It's. It's good. I'm liking it. I, I was going to say, oh, you could put this line on a T-shirt, but maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then, like, maybe that's uh, not a good idea. A couple lines down, safety of the setting sun. Um. Oh yeah. Uh. It's uh towards the safe sunset. But okay. it's like uh, we we could you couldn't really say the setting sun like in Swedish that would be like the sun that was setting you would have, and it would be really long so towards the 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 safe sunset okay and and I use uh, a word for safe that is like uh, like you could you could wor- use words that have connotations that are more similar to maybe secure or something like that but but this word trick guys like. Uh, it also invokes the feeling of safety in in yeah. swedish i guess in poetry like we could just stick with this so in swedish poetry is the spoken sound as important as the words on the page to me doesn't seem like they are i like, mean we have a really big like the divide between and maybe this is the same thing in in america but the the divide is between people who do like poetry slam and and spoken poetry of any kind and the people who are published and yeah that like the very big difference between just these two groups like yeah. and to me i can i find it a bit difficult to read a lot of modern poetry just because i don't know how it's supposed to sound like <laughs> yeah and uh, it's very it can be very unclear i'm 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 assuming that there is a heavy oral tradition in swedish culture that dates back hundreds of years right you were saying earlier though like that a lot of the culture is very much like you stay inside yeah. And it's very isolated, I guess, in that sense. So yeah. it, in that sense, is the auditory version of poetry important in Sweden, I guess, is the best way to answer, ask that question. I mean, I don't think that you say that the that it is a tradition nowadays. I think that that has changed. But... You know, a, a lot of it, it's sort of artificially maintained in in, yeah. in 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 some places. Like, for example, every fall, all the libraries usually have like a uh, like a storytelling evening, mm-hmm. but just one, and it's supposed to be like commemorating how people used to tell stories, okay. like by candlelight when when it gets darker, and so that 
type of event is really common but i i, I don't think that that uh, it's like um, nowadays i don't know like in america there are a couple different groups i guess you could say because in the academic circles i think your poetry has to look amazing on the page and it has to yeah. sound amazing when you say it okay like you 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 need both if you don't have both you're fucked whereas mm -hmm. in the like free form or free verse communities that are not academic like as long as what you're saying on paper rings true then that's good but then you also have like you were saying your slam poets who like everything is based on how it sounds and how it's mm -hmm. performed and if you take a lot of that slam poetry and then put that down on paper sometimes it's not strong i guess is the best yeah. way to say it and so because there are these kind of i guess there's like three different camps here i just assume that that's how it is everywhere and it might not mm -hmm. be and because of things about language of other languages that i have no idea about i can't assume that all of these different places are going to have the same emphasis put on different things and so it's always like really mm -hmm. bizarre for me to think about what i can say is that <laughs> i have a, an experience that i've had a lot with the sort of the fancy poets who are <laughs> getting published in in book form is that they can sometimes decide that uh, some things are important in their poems, like the way they sound, like they can sort of, uh, like there was this radio interview a few years ago by, with a poet who's really famous and uh, <laughs> she, her, her poems are very, uh, very, a lot of mysticism, like it's very, very obscure, okay, very esoteric. And uh, but I I actually like them even though I kind of feel I shouldn't. <laughs> and and she was like uh, she was being interviewed by a very popular radio presenter who who uh, does all the literary stuff uh, on the on the on Swedish public radio. Uh, and and like she sort of the poet sort of instructed the presenter how to pronounce the title of the the poetry collection that she had just. Uh, published and i was like shouldn't that be something that is made clear by the title itself on the book cover yeah and uh, and the same thing happened again like uh, it was here in my in the town where i live uh, like i went to a read and a poet sort of told everyone that this is how the, this line is supposed to be read and then she read it that way and again i had the feeling that well why doesn't like why doesn't it say so on the paper why why don't you just adjust it to sort of be the way you want it and it's like, so I think that that's, I so, think that's where we are. Like, <laughs> So in Sweden, in the Swedish language, there are different ways to pronounce things that everyone should already know how to pronounce anyway? Uh, not really. I think that, that in these cases, it's just that the, the poet has a very clear idea of how, how a sentence, like how, like, for example, what a word should be stressed in a particular oh, okay. sentence. Okay, okay. And, uh, and they just don't convey that idea in the actual poem. Uh, yeah, so that's what I meant. With that. So that's, to me, but I haven't really, this isn't something that I've, that I've, that I've really looked into. But yeah. to me, it feels like may, maybe there are poets that, where how the way things sound are, every, that's everything. Like, uh, that's the most important thing. And then there are poets who think that the sound is important, but it isn't because they haven't really made the effort to actually convey it in the actual poem. Yeah, for real. So, yeah. So is th these poems here, um, the, the three by me, is this something that Sweden would go, oh, this is okay. This is what poetry is here. Or is this like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, I have to answer answer honestly. <laughs> but I I do think that they would be. I think that uh, critics and publishers would be skeptical. Yeah. But I think that the general public you wouldn't have any trouble at all. Like, because this is like, I mean, these are um, poets that like anyone can read, mm -hmm. and it's like. Uh, uh, maybe someone who is like working as a bus driver and has never read anything 
any book in their life maybe they will think that the 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 um, uh, vengeful uh, desk lamp is a bit strange as a theme but yeah. they will still be able to read the poem as a kind of text whereas with a lot of the uh, like acclaimed poets they wouldn't be able to do that because it would, would just be nonsense to them i think i was talking to um, uh, a few months ago with a guy from vietnam him uh, like a, a swedish poem uh, just i had a i have a few new collections over here and i just took one out on random and 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 showed it to him and he asked me oh so Swedish poetry is just, is that just like putting any words you want on a piece of paper and that's it? And the answer is kind of, it's yes, <laughs> because it is. Is there a divide between the common man in Sweden and what the um, big publishers in Sweden are putting out? Yeah. And the, oh my God. And the, the publishers know this, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, they were, they were. There is like a podcast that a couple of publishers are at, and and they were talking very candidly about this uh, a couple of months back, and they said that well, literature. The it, we're not selling enough literature today, and um, people were quite shocked by the numbers. It was like a new and this is this is we are talking novels now and like a, and in sweden we have 10 million people so it's a small country but 10 million is still 10 million yeah people and and a new novel would sell between six and eight hundred copies and oh. uh, in some cases more than a thousand so yeah so over a thousand is like the best seller in sweden yeah, it's a, well, uh, now we're talking like, I guess, the kind of books that you and I would read. You, you wouldn't yeah. be, uh, this isn't like crime fiction or, or feel good or like those kinds of things, because those you can find like in the the grocery store and the yeah. things like that. So they are not, they are very popular, of course. And then people can sell uh, like uh, 200,000 copies, like, okay. and then they can make a living of it. But like with but like literary about... fiction or poetry or i mean you were talking novels so literary fiction yeah something <laughs> like we we talk about quality literature in sweden yeah. it's kind of a douchey <laughs> way to, to say yeah. it but but it's like when when it's not like a and we and they we 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 talk about quality fiction and quality literature and genre yeah literature for real and so the uh, and now we're like in the in that area but it's not it's not very well defined it's very like uh yeah, anything that isn't like uh, uh, that doesn't belong to something to a genre. Like, so the publishers know there's a problem. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. This this situation is very very complex, or it's not really complex, but it's very. Uh, I don't really know how to approach it in my mind. <laughs> like I don't yeah. know how to think about it. Like we recently had this uh, debate in in uh, in uh, like a few newspapers and uh, there was this guy he was he didn't really express himself very eloquently mm. uh, but he was in the jury or in the in the sort of people that decide who should receive uh, the biggest um, literary award that the way we have in sweden uh, not the nobel prize but the national that's within yeah. sweden only and he was like oh my god all the books were so boring and uh, and then he his his point was like, I mean, this is a problem. I mean, no. but maybe he shouldn't have called the books boring because oh my god, <laughs> people were angry. Oh, I and, bet. Uh, and they were like, and and he was he was like, uh, and I, there was a friend of mine who wanted to write something like a, an a opinion piece in a newspaper about this, but he said I can't do it because they're going to kill me, <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, and yes, they would, they would, and almost literally. And uh, because it's for some reason, people are really, really defensive about this sort of like accessibility thing. Yeah. And uh, this same debate has it's recurring. I mean, it happens over and over. I mean, the first one I remember is when from when I was a teenager, which wasn't that long ago. But it's like it feels like this is something that comes up every now and then. Is it it's, is it a class thing? Yeah, <laughs> low class reads genre fiction, and middle and upper class read literary fiction or quality Absolutely. fiction. When, okay. when you talk about social class, uh, not yeah. uh, economic class, but 
but uh, definitely it's like that and uh, and uh, and there was someone who who wrote something about re- it recently and they said literature uh, must not become a matter of class and i was like become a matter of class like it is yeah i mean uh, christ it's 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 so uh, uh, yeah, there is a very clear division between like where you are in society and what the books you read, or if you read at all. Yeah, I think it's the same here. Like, yeah. I think it's very much the same. We also have the situation where bigger publishers are like swallowing the small ones, and but yeah. it's interesting because at least it's my impression that publishers in Sweden used to be more honest about that. Because I recognize like publishers talking about that openly about uh, we have the books that sell and we have the books that don't yeah. and the books that sell are the ones that that's where the money comes from to produce the ones that don't yeah and uh, and that I think that kind of makes sense and it's like but now but then I don't know apparently they have been become more quiet about things but the thing is in Sweden like we have a very simple solution uh to uh, every problem that a swedish person will ever have and it's that we have a very strong public sector and so like for example in i went to a play tonight produced by my local theater and i paid zero <laughs> kronor, which is our currency <laughs> and uh because uh like 95.6 percent of all theater is financed by the public sector in sweden and so, I mean, they still have to, you know, put in an effort to reach out to the audience, but they don't yeah. have the financial struggles. Yeah. And it's like, and it's the same thing with art. Like all the art galleries, most of them are like run by municipalities and counties. And we have like, we have a heavy, uh, like a really big support system for the, for literature as well. But I'm like, why do we need private companies in the literary sector? Why can't we just abolish them? And and like, well, we, they can still exist, but they can like, why don't we finance them? Like we can, yeah. we're a rich country. And it's like, because that's like, um, that's what Swedish society is. It's like, uh, well, it used to be. We, we are more, much more right wing now than like when I, when I was born. <laughs> But it's like uh, it's it's uh, we have capitalism and then we have this social democracy that sort of patches it whenever it doesn't work, and it doesn't work in the arts yeah. because there is no money there. Well, people aren't away to uh, they don't want to pay what it costs, you know. See, that just blows my fucking mind, and like I'm sure you get that all the time. But like here, like you have like the archetype of this the starving artist. And all that shit. Like, yeah. do you do you have that whole thing in Sweden, or does is it something that like the government comes in and helps those people? Yeah, I mean, uh, theoretically, the government can help. We have this uh, uh, we have this big uh, fund that's for it's intended to compensate for all the libraries that we have, even though we have much fewer libraries than we used to. But and uh, and then it and from that, uh, essentially, you. Uh, you receive a tiny bit of money for every time someone borrows a book in a library. Yeah. Uh, and also you can apply for grants. So if you like, if you're in, in some very niche or some very, uh, something that's not, there is no money in that type of literature, then you can apply for for grants at this. It's actually a, a like a public agency or like a public authority. It's like, yeah. and that sort of balances things out a little bit, but it's not nearly enough yeah. i mean i'm i'm still i mean by my by swedish standards i'm so poor that i i don't exist <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's uh, so uh, be- deep below all the yeah. all the like uh, ways that you measure po- po- poverty that it's yeah. insane but i make it work yeah well no. i i live in public housing it's cheap so yeah. you know the public sector that's where they where you have all the everything you need Oh like well, gosh. not the public sector. I mean, the society as a whole. I think yeah. that we should like should uh, the society as a whole should like take responsibility for everything in it. Yeah, for real. Yeah, that is something but, that um, that causes such fucking chaos over here when people start talking mm-hmm. about that. It's like motherfuckers start losing their goddamn mind, and I'm like, yeah. calm the fuck down. You know, like yeah. we put money into shit that none of us even know or care about 
all the fucking time and motherfuckers are starving on the street and sleeping yeah. on the fucking sidewalk you know like fuck that but I mean, we have but we have we have versions of that in sweden it's not yeah. as severe uh, but we we have homeless people or unhoused people sorry i your books are here by the way i was going to oh. show them to you that i have them <laughs> oh shit <laughs> that's awesome dude yeah nice <laughs> but uh, anyway and but it's like um, it's not i guess i guess the situation isn't as serious in sweden. Yeah. i don't know but um uh, but like um, like for example during the pandemic it really hit hit the entire arts sector really hard oh i bet yeah and it uh, during this time the library related fund that i mentioned before they had these crisis uh, grants that that they were just handing out to lots and lots of writers and translators like like crazy and that yeah. was really good and i received one and because I lost, uh, I had like an, a job on the side that I lost because of the pandemic, and I still haven't found a new one. So, <laughs> so it was really good that I could receive grants like that to sort yeah. of continue living. And but at the same time, there were friends of mine who didn't receive any grants, and I was like, why not? And then there were people who did receive grants who, where I asked why. Because it's just normal income people yeah. who receive crisis grants. And it's like, and I actually wrote to the man on top you know, in, yeah. on that at that agency. And I wrote, why? I mean, this wasn't good, was it? Maybe you should do things differently <laughs> going forward. Uh, but it's like, uh, it's not that bad. I mean, it's very... It's a first world problem, but it's still unfair. I mean, uh, I have uh, friends now who are thinking of leaving the literature because it's too difficult for them, and I'm like, no, because because they, they, there are translators that have that know really that have that the languages that they translate from can be very unusual. Maybe there aren't many translators who have that combination of languages. Yeah, and there are just writers that are really good. There is actually a friend of mine who is a writer. He reminds me a little bit of you, like your style and your the themes and everything. And it's and he's like he's not doing anything anymore. And it's like because it is it's too stressful financially. And I'm like this is a problem that it's very very easy to solve because we have the solution. Yeah, we are just not using it, and it's what you said before, like how the state sort of spends money on things that the people, things that people don't care about or know about. Yeah, for real. And uh, why not spend them more wisely? Why not spend them on people? Well, this is uh, a big topic. Yeah, yeah for <laughs> real, dude. Oh my God, this was so much fun. It was so good to fucking talk to you, dude, and just see you and fucking, like, like you've been around forever. So, like, being able to, like, oh, yeah, see have. you and shit, like, yeah. it, it's Oh, we have been great. talking for a long time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a bit, but that's that's good. Yeah. Like I appreciate it. But yeah, dude, thank you so much. That that was awesome. It was so fucking cool to like see how you do that and like what goes into it. And that was the wonderful interview I did with Jens H about um, translating poetry and my misconceptions about translation. And he set me straight on a bunch of stuff. And so that was awesome. I love learning stuff. And I really don't even care when someone points out how fucking stupid I am. I almost relish it. A um, little bit of mustard, a little bit of ketchup, maybe some sauerkraut. Okay. So, let's get into those motherfucking butt plugs. Okay, so the butt plugs are, again, Poems About Fucking, out now. Go get it. Poetic Anarchy Volume 3, out now. Go get it. Tomorrow, again, Poetic Anarchy, open mic, slash workshop, slash scavenger hunt. It starts Thursday, February 16th at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, Zoom links will be in the description below if you would like to hang out with that. Um, if you would like to do a mentorship call with me, um, these have been going really great, and I really feel like um, the people who have been doing it have been really getting stuff out of it. 
and I've been seeing how they're growing, and I'm just fucking excited about it. So if you're interested in that, go to IHateMattWall.com slash mentorship. Check it out. See what there is to see on there. When you decide what you want to do, send me an email to IHateMattWall at gmail.com. Tell me what you want to talk about, and we will set it up. Also, if you would like to join the Anarchy Crew, you do that. Um, at the link down below, you go to my YouTube page. If you would rather just do the Patreon, go to patreon.com slash Matt Wall. And again, get ready for the um, crowdfunding campaign for the pre-orders for Winner Your Mom Saw Me Prize for Poetry, my new collection that's coming out. Uh, also, if you haven't signed up for my mailing list yet, go to IHateMattWall.com and click the little box uh, to get a free book and also... Um, know when shit's going on and you also get like coupons and shit like that for when I'm doing sales on Etsy and all that other stuff and do that stuff now because very very soon I'm tra- I'm changing everything over to my own website and the website for the upcoming Poetic Anarchy Press jeez that was a lot keep buying my books, type hard and I will talk to you all later I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.